What is going on guys, my name is Shadows and welcome back to another video. Last weekend was actually supposed to be Trials of Osiris, but yet again they have delayed it. In my opinion though, I think that this is a good thing because they can remove all the bugs that are in the game and we can have more time to prepare. With that being said, this is a full guide on how you can be as prepared as possible for Trials of Osiris and go flawless week 1. Right before we get into this video though, I just wanted to thank you guys for the insane amount of growth I've been getting recently. Last video I was thanking you guys for 500 subscribers and now I'm almost at 1000 subscribers. This is all really surreal to me still and I know I thank you guys every single time and it sounds cornier each time but truly it means a lot to me. Teaching people new things and entertaining people is one of my main passions and I'm glad that you guys are making this possible for me. So just again, thank you. With all that out of the way guys, I'm going to be sectioning this video into three parts. The first part is going to be about how you can mentally and physically prepare yourself for trials. The second part is going to be about subclasses and the best exotics for each character. And the third section is going to be all the best meta weapons for PvP. With all that being said, let's talk about the first section. In Trials of Osiris, level advantages are enabled, therefore your power level actually matters. Your power bonus from your artifact is not taken into consideration in this equation and it is only your base power that matters, not the artifact. For example, if you're 1265 but you have a 15 bonus power from your artifact, in Trials of Osiris your level will display as 1250. I would recommend shooting for 1250 power to be in a good spot for Trials. The maximum power level that you can reach is going to be 1260 base power, so if you could do this, that is absolutely optimal. The next huge important thing that you're going to want to do is make sure you have a team ready and set up for Trials. Trials will be dropping on December 18th, 2020, so this gives you plenty of time for you and your team to go practice in elimination. I know that survival is listed as the competitive mode, which I think is kind of stupid because elimination seems much more competitive and is the exact same format as trials. What I would do is get your team together and hop in some elimination and practice different strategies. Also practice different maps because map knowledge and game sense is going to be extremely important. Make sure you're communicating with your team and you and your team have callouts for different spots on each map. Another big thing that some people find extremely useful are third party aim trainers. Softwares like Kovacs and Aim Labs are extremely good for making sure your aim is on point for when trials comes around. If you go on your aim trainer and set your setting to Overwatch, this is pretty much identical to Destiny and is a really good way of training your aim. I personally use Aim Beast to train my aim because my friend gifted it to me. If you play Valorant or Rainbow Six Siege or any other competitive FPS game, you'll realize that a lot of skills in those games will actually carry over to Destiny. Things like aim, movement, game sense, callouts, everything about them will carry over. All games are unique though and Destiny is no exception, which is why I recommend you and your team go practice. On the 18th, don't forget to get a good night's sleep the night before and get food in your system so that you could be playing at your peak performance. The next thing that I want to talk about is subclasses and class specific exotics. I'm going to be starting off with titans because I am personally a titan main. For you titans out there, I would recommend 100% bottom tree striker with the dune marcher's exotic legs. The main reason bottom tree striker is so good is because of the knockout perk. This perk makes it so that when you crack someone's shields, your melee range is extremely far and does a lot of damage. With the knockout perk active, if you tag an enemy with any weapon for any amount of damage, you could soar at them with a punch that will instantly kill them. Granted, this perk only lasts for 5 seconds, but it resets every time you get a kill and can be extremely useful in a close quarter situation. The Dune Marcher's exotic makes it so that there's a chain of electricity whenever you melee someone that transforms transfers to other people. Not only this, but your movement speed is increased in general, which is a nice buff. Hunters, I would recommend using Golden Gun with 6 Shooter or Stasis. For your exotic, I would 100% recommend the Helm of Bakris. 
Golden Gun with six shooters is extremely good because the Golden Gun is a one shot to each player, meaning that you can wipe a whole squad with one Golden Gun alt with ease as long as they're all together. Stasis is also extremely powerful because you could literally freeze your enemies in place, and even though the ult isn't super good, I think that the grenades make up for it. However, in the right hands, the ult can be an absolute death machine. For the exotic, the Helm of Bakris turns your dodge into a kind of blink, giving it much more range and making you invisible while doing so. I believe this got slightly nerfed, but I still do believe that it is extremely powerful in PvP. Another pretty solid hunter exotic is the Stompies, which are exotic legs. These buff your jump and can be extremely useful for evading shots or just throwing your enemy off in general. Warlocks. For your subclass, I would definitely recommend Stasis. I feel like the Warlock exotics don't matter as much in PvP, but I would throw on either Transversive Steps or Ophidian Aspect. In my opinion, Stasis is the most broken subclass on the Warlock. To start off, the melee is extremely powerful because just by meleeing your enemies, you can freeze them in place. Not only this, but the ult is one of the best supers in the entire game. Being able to just fly around and one tap freeze people and use your right click ability to absolutely demolish them. If you're a warlock, I would highly recommend sticking to stasis unless you're some kind of god with a dawnblade or something. As far as exotics go, transversive steps are pretty good because not only do they increase your sprint speed, but they also reload the current weapon that you have equipped while sprinting. This is extremely useful if you're tagged up and getting out of a fight and don't have time to reload, you can just reload it automatically. Another great exotic for you warlocks is the gauntlets called Ophidian Aspect. These are good because they make you reload and draw your weapon extremely quickly. Not only this, but they also increase your melee range, making you be able to get the advantage in a close quarters fight. I think that about sums up all the subclasses and exotics that I recommend you use on each character. Obviously there are going to be some subclasses and some exotics that you may enjoy using that I didn't list in this video and in my opinion I think that you should go with whatever you are comfortable with. For this next section I'm going to be talking about all the best weapons to be using for PvP. For primary weapons, my number one choice is going to have to be Ace of Spades. The Ace of Spades is an exotic hand cannon that can be retrieved from the exotic archive that is extremely powerful. This is because of its intrinsic perk Momentum Mori that makes it so that you deal extra damage if you reload after a kill. You get 6 extra bullets that do increased damage and it is extremely good. The Thorn is also another exotic hand cannon that I would recommend as a substitute for the Ace of Spades or use whichever one you find more comfortable. The Thorn is another exotic hand cannon that deals damage to enemies over time with a poison effect. If you kill someone with it, you could run over their body to pick up an orb that makes the poison damage deal more damage. The gun is still pretty good, I just personally think that the Ace of Spades is a bit more powerful. Other legendary hand cannons that are good in my opinion is Dire Promise and the True Prophecy hand cannon. Dire Promise always has been good and still is good, as well as the True Prophecy, which is a future war cult hand cannon that is also super powerful. As far as pulse rifles go, I would recommend the No Time to Explain or Stars in Shadow. No Time to Explain is the exotic pulse rifle you got from pre-ordering Beyond Light. For whatever reason though, I didn't get it with my pre-order and I don't know if any of you guys have had that same issue, but I don't know how to fix it. I'm not really too worried though because I'm 100% going to be using Ace of Spades. Stars in Shadow is an energy pulse rifle that is also super super good. For sniper rifles, I would recommend the Adored, which is pretty much the new beloved and it is a very nice sniper if I do say so myself. Although make sure you do have Killing Wind and Snapshot Sights equipped and not Triple Tap and Vorpal Weapon. For auto rifles, you've got a lot of options here. You have Suros Regime, which is the exotic auto rifle. You have the Forward Path. You have Gnawing Hunger, which as you guys may know has always been really good. Or you have the Summoner, which is the Trials of Osiris auto rifle from last season. I've heard that they're going to be making adept versions of all the old Trials weapons, so if the Summoner adept version does come out, I have high hopes for that weapon being insanely good. Good. For grenade launchers, actually running Wither Horde might not be a bad idea if you use it correctly. If you get a kill, shooting a Wither Horde shot on the orb is actually a pretty good strategy and one that I've actually been seeing used in game. 
having one person on your team running Wither Horde to deny reses might actually be the move. For shotguns, obviously Felwinter's Lie will always be at the top, but I would also recommend Xenoclast or the 7th Seraph CQC-12. Xenoclast is a new shotgun that got added in Beyond Light, and I have honestly fell in love with it and use it for both PvE and PvP. This will most likely be my main energy weapon used in Trials of Osiris, unless I'm sniping and swapped to the Adored. And for the last weapon type that I'm going to be covering, LMGs are really good as well, especially the Hammerhead and the Xenophage. Hammerhead has always been good, and I really do think it's due to its range and stability. The Hammerhead is a black armory machine gun that has been in the game forever now. The Xenophage is an exotic LMG that shoots explosive rounds that I actually covered in my last video. Not only is it good for destroying raid bosses, but it's also pretty good for PvP. The only downside to it is that it's an exotic and it's going to be chewing up your exotic slot for only when you're using heavy rounds. In my opinion, I would stick to a legendary heavy weapon. Using a sword as a power weapon can actually also be pretty nice because when you pull it out your character goes into third person so you can peek corners without putting yourself at risk. A little tip though is that actually if you emote you can do this without even needing a sword leaving you with a better heavy weapon. And that's pretty much all there is to it. In this video I covered the best ways that you could prepare for trials mentally and physically as well as all the best subclasses and class exotics to use as well as all the best meta weapons. I'm sorry if I didn't go into as much detail as I usually do with my other videos because there was just so much information for me to cover in this video. I just wanted to get as much of it in this video in a short time as possible. Even though this video is super information heavy, I do hope that you found some enjoyment out of it and were actually able to take something away from this video. I cannot wait for trials on the 18th and I'm just as hyped for this as you guys are. Anyways guys, with all that being said, don't hesitate to drop me a comment down below if if you have any questions or concerns about anything that I mentioned in this video. I've been talking to a lot of you guys in the comment section and I really do feel like we're one big family which I think is really cool. Even though I make tutorial videos, I do want to add some personality to my videos so they're not super boring and stale. I'm still trying to figure out how I want to do this or how I want to incorporate this or where I'm going to go with my content but all I know is that I've got you guys by my side. Anyways guys, I'm pretty much just rambling on at this point. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to drop a like down below and leave me a comment if you need help with anything or want to request a specific guide. Thank you for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video. Have a great rest of your day.